Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's me, Busy B. Today is a a journey. Today is a very big journey. You can see I'm smiling, but inside I'm I'm sad. Um, I am fighting COVID, and I have to find things to do to occupy my time. <clears throat> As you can hear, I'm having a hard time breathing, trying to talk in the video. Um, have you seen some of my wacky videos of COVID-19 Ninja Warrior? Uh, Ninja Warrior has COVID, just like Busy B, and he got it from not following the instructions that he gives. Yes, but we'll talk about that later at another video, how to prevent from COVID a little bit more in depth than what Ninja Warrior had talked about, okay? Today's a different video. It's an educational video for you folks that... Um, are looking for full-time RVing, okay? Uh, full-time RVing, it means you have your RV set up in a certain spot and you don't plan on moving it for quite some time or permanent setup is what I should say. So, um, further ado, I am going to show you more of a permanent setup for your RV. Um, now, that being said... Um, <clears throat> There is a few essentials that any RV should have for full-time RVing. And that is a fuel source for your RV to keep it warm, uh, to cook, and stuff to be able to cook, bathe, whatever you need. You need the essentials. Warmth, a way to get rid of your waste, and you need a way um, to uh, bathe or whatever you need. You need water, of course. So you need all the essentials. Willow! Excuse me, I have to haul, haul it from my dog. Um, she's real curious. Uh, we got a puppy dog that's sick right now, and he's not in great shape, and they can't do nothing for him right now. Um, he's not my puppy dog. He's a friend of mine. Hold on one second. All right, hey, let's take the puppy dogs back in the house, because Willow likes to wonder, because she's a beagle. And uh, Willow is a very large beagle. <laughs> her nose gets her in trouble. She loves to eat. So, uh, huh. Okay. Um, curiosity. I'll find out what that is later. <laughs> okay. So, um, hmm. So, my wife and I, it's something that my, my buddy's doing. I don't know what he's up to, but it looks pretty interesting. You know, me, I like to put things together because I'm bored right now doing COVID, but I'm trying to stay focused on the video for you guys. I'm sorry. I just like, huh, maybe that's what he's doing when I'm not around. I don't know what he's doing. Might be something he got from work and he's going to make something with it, maybe. Be cool. You know, he gets cool stuff once in a while from work. So, um, Let's get back on track of the video. So I'm trying to show you a more permanent setup for your RV. Let's get that into the video and let's show you a little bit what I got going on. Okay, so you need to get rid of your waste. You need to be able to dump your waste somewhere safely. You could do like some people do. Uh, if they don't have a septic, you could get a, a big tank. And I'll show you what I have. <clears throat> now what I have is I have a pump and to get rid of the pee and the poo and it's, there, there's no other way you can put it you know you got you got the pee and the poo so what i have is a large tank like this okay and i have a pump that's not the pump that's my generator that i have to use for backup from when power does go out okay but I have i have to have a way to heat my home if it gets too cold so we had this tank here that we bought off of somebody. It came with the RV. And you fill that tank up with your pee and your poo. And how you do it is you have a pump. You hook it to your hose. And then you start your pump up. And you open your valves. Let it rip, tater chip. And you're sucking all the pee and the poo out of the RV. Now, got that out of the way. So... <clears throat> Now, instead of doing that, you could do something a little bit different than what, than, than what some people have to do. 
you know, you could pull the RV to his facility, dump it there. But the thing is, is that with this, you have to keep record on where, how many times you're dumping, okay? Just for the health department, if they say, oh, you're dumping in the woods or whatever, keep track of where you're dumping. If you can get a receipt, get a receipt. Keep track of those days that you're dumping your stuff because they're going to come back and say, well, you're dumping it somewhere and we don't know where you're putting it, okay? Because they can't get you fined. They can't find you for it. I have already talked to the health department all about it. So I'm keeping track of where I'm putting my dumps. My dumps are, are in a safe, <coughs> environmentally friendly way. <coughs> and they're actually going in a septic tank. Okay. So you can't hook an RV full time on a septic tank. All right. So I will show you what I have. And then I'll exactly show you the part that you need for this. Okay. You're like, really? You could actually set this thing up full time on an RV and make it all work like a regular plumbing for your house. Yes. But the thing is, a little different than a house is that you have to let your, your black tank fill up enough and then close your gray tank for, a few, for about a couple days when you know it's starting to get close to needing to be empty on your black tank. And then go ahead and, um, you know, just let your gray tank fill up a little bit. I always leave the gray tank open because it's just mostly just liquid water is all it is. There's nothing solid in there. And then I'll let it fill up, and then I'll open that up once I open up the black tank first. And then I'll close off my black tank. I'll flush it out, of course, and then I'll close the black tank up. And then I'll open the gray tank to fill the to release the rest of the elements that's in the pipe or whatever I have, okay, or the hose. But I have done different. I've used a 3-inch pipe on my RV to... Um, get rid of the pee and the poo okay so i'll show you what i have it's a simple setup and i'll tell you where you can get it a matter of fact and it's hard to find part but i got lucky when i found it there's not very many around because everybody's rving so much right now because of covid <laughs> believe it or not a lot more people more people are, are uh, using rvs to go places to keep from going to hotels and i'll show you what i got Here's what I have. I have a three inch pipe and then I have this black piece right here. I'll kind of show you what I got. So you could see there's my pipe itself, then my three inch pipe and so on and so forth. Okay. So that's what I have. And then I have a pipe going from here down to the next connection. Cause I have two hookups in my RV. I have a back bathroom and then I have a front bathroom. Not very many RVs have that set up for half bath. Because the open range one I have has that setup. Then I have a pipe from this one, which is underneath the tarp. I'm not going to go into depth. You got the concept. And then you have your pipe out here, which goes at a 90 degree, you know, like a small elbow. And then it goes on into a septic tank. And I, it's part of the clean out. Okay. So what I did was I took the end here on this lid. I bought another lid. And then I turned back around and cut a hole in it, put a piece of PVC down in it, glued it shut, and then put the lid on top. And of course I have a clean out up top and everything, everything is in a play. And then voila, you have to have access in case you get a plug in your piping to go out. Now, none of this is glued together at all. I have it actually taped together. It has got a good bond and seal with everything going on. And I used furnace tape because I figured, hey, It'll probably stick okay. Use Gorilla Tape, TRX Tape, if you wanted to, to get a good bond. But there's not enough pressure going through it. It's just all going downhill is all it's doing. Because the RV is sitting up on a hill and everything's going downhill. Man, my, my hands are getting cold because I'm doing a video for you guys. So, you're, you're wanting to know what exactly I used for the fitting. Well, here you go, folks. It is a rigid pipe adapter, a three inch hub and bayonet hooks. This is what it looks like. Okay. And I will put the product number and everything in the description below. And it's made in Mexico of all places. So you can see here, it's going to be backwards on your screen. I will um, put the product description down below, what everything is. But this part rotates. Okay. 
as you can see, it rotates. All right, it moves. So you can lock that baby onto your actual pipe fitting. So how it goes, goes like this, locks on, put your three inch PVC in there, glue it, whatever you gotta do to get it to stay on there so it doesn't leak. You don't want any sewer leaking. My stuff does not leak because I put it, it on very snugly and I also have it taped. So this is exactly what you guys need for the application, okay? So um, this is a very handy utensil to have for your RV if you're full-time RVing for your pooper. And uh, I know it's funny, you know, you, you, you try to come up with ideas to make it work. If I would have known about this applicator years ago, I probably would have done my last RV like this. My first RV, it was from the 70s. It didn't have any tanks. And it didn't have a hookup like that. If I would have known to put regular house pipe on it, I would have done it way long time before. And my stuff probably would not have froze up in the wintertime. And it's a mess. When your hoses crack and all that, it is a mess. And this is wintertime right now where I'm at. So this is the perfect setup because you got your, your pipes and everything up here, you know. And it's a lot easier than having a mess with a frozen hose. Okay? It sucks. Because then it's going to crack. It's going to bust. And you got all the pee and the poo on the ground. And then it just really does suck. So, that's one thing you could do for the winter um, for that. The other thing we had that came with the trailer, we got lucky. Uh, the last owner of the RV has a somewhat of a tarp. It's a skirt that goes around the RV all the way around. And they have like these little, I call it, little buttons that you just push in. They snap on. Me, personally, I would have done something about like that. And then, also, I thought about putting some thin foam insulation on the backside. Excuse me. With that, to insulate underneath the RV. It keeps the, keeps the cold down in the RV in the winter. Um, and then, also... On this part I would probably put something up here too if I had the extra uh, tarp and I would put more up here too because this is where the bedrooms at matter of fact my main bedroom and it does get a little chilly in there sometimes when it gets real cold out and you just got air going underneath but he didn't he's a new RV -er. he didn't quite understand and I, I will probably in the near future um, I thought about taking some skids and, you know, just kind of put them up there around and make me like a little bit of a surround and kind of like a chill spot. You know, I thought about putting a bench and everything. I got some stuff going on with that. Now, the uh, last video I did a while back on the fuel tank, it's working flawlessly. No problems at all. Everything's working just fine. Uh, matter of fact, since I did the video, I am probably back down to like right here. Is where my fuel level is in my tank so really I haven't used that much on the furnace and cooking and stuff all in all it's going pretty good flawlessly of how I have it all hooked up I mean you could even use you can use an empty tank inside to hook all that up and if you want to know how I did all that I have a previous video but I will give you a gander of what I did in the daytime so you got to adjust of that video that I did Let's go in here and open up the old goodie box. So, so as you see, I have my Y fitting here, okay. Then I have it hooked in my little bitty tank here, all right. Then I have the Buddy Connector connection, which is a male end with a with a regular tip you would have for like filling your small propane tanks up with a tank about this size possibly. So your little bitty uh, Buddy. Uh, tanks, you know your little bitty green propane tanks that you got for Coleman or whatever your small ones You know probably about maybe a liter pint size or whatever you want to call it um, for like your small little um, Your little camping stoves and stuff like that I mean that's what the adapter is and then I took it and hooked it up to that end and of course you have the end of a long 12 foot hose and then I hooked it into my bigger tank. That's how I hooked all that up. And yeah, it's it's a mess out here, but I'm staying where I can. So 
yeah i love you guys thank you so much um but it's going to get cleaned up this summer when it gets warmed up because i am volunteering my help to get this place to look phenomenal for the homeowner we got a trailer and we're going to start scrapping like no tomorrow man oh yeah we're gonna have a good old time but anyway uh that's pretty much it for like wintertime setup and um, if you have an opportunity to invest in a generator for your RV, do it. It's a lifesaver. We had a power outage for a few hours, and it got cold very quick in the RV. And, uh, I mean, if you can have, like, a propane setup in the RV that will run strictly on the propane, that's great. Um, but we didn't have anything like that. I wish we did, but we probably will. And guess what? The furnace went out again. Uh, for a third time now so we decided we're going to use space heaters for now uh, we're doing the safer way we're using like an oil style heater with a radiator um, the RV places said that would be the we safer way to go and then of course our one heater we had that was a fireplace in the RV it went out I still yet got to figure out how to make it work to fix it and I'm waiting on an opportunity to set it on the table and work on it and I'm not gonna sit out in the cold and do it because that's just nuts but anyway I just want to do a little video for you guys show you full-time RVing what the little techniques and stuff you guys can do for that and this is my home full-time I love this thing it is so cool I love it it's one of the better RVs I've ever seen in my lifetime I mean Things have changed in the past 40 some years since the, the one I had, you know, I was like, wow, these things are nice. Because when I went and looked at them, they weren't this this nice and they're getting like way nice. And uh, we'll eventually do an inside video of our home once everything is more settled. And uh, I just want to kind of do a little video and say, hey, I'm here, still here. You know, another investment would be one of these for your fifth wheel hitch helps out very much when the wind blows um, also it helps out when uh, things get rowdy in the bedroom you know and uh, just it doesn't rock as much is what I should say um, you know when people walk in and stuff like that you know when the dogs get playing it just kind of shakes the trailer a little bit and then also this has an automatic leveler you just hit a button and then just does everything on its own it's very cool um, it's better than do it the way I did it with a drill or a handle or whatever have you and how to get everything situated, you know, and jacks and stuff. It's just crazy how technology has changed in the, in the time that I tried to learn how to do all this. So y'all have a great and wonderful day. Like and subscribe this video. Um, give me as many likes and many. If you see this video for the first time and seen me for the first time, subscribe for more videos, man. I'm all time giving really good ideas to help the, uh, the average person you might see a video one of my videos and you see a friend having a problem so dude i just saw this on busy b you might have learned something from it and it helped somebody else that's what the world's about is helping everybody in this world when they need help you might be educated for my video and like dude that's cool i like the idea comment down below if you learned something from this because i never knew about the adapter the adapter for this until I got the RV and I saw this. The sad part was the first set I had, one snapped on me. It took me two weeks to figure out where I could get one because all the RV stores were sold out. I had to type in the part number, which I'll put in a link down below what the part number is. And then also the SKU number and everything is. So that if you go to look it up on, on uh, Google, you'll be able to find it because that's how I had to find mine. I had to go on Google to find it. And then I found it on eBay actually of all places. And I had to set up a new account for eBay and everything. And I got it that way. Amazon within a couple days sold out as soon as they got them. I mean, it's that quick. So a lot of people are full-time RVing in this, in this world right now because of COVID. And you know, I hope you learned something from this. Y'all have a great and wonderful day. Just remember, this wouldn't be possible without you guys. And if it wasn't possible for you, I wouldn't make this possible. So this is possible, B. And I'm Busy B. Y'all have a great and wonderful day. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Remember to like and subscribe to this video. Pray for me, people, because I'm going with the COVID right now, trying to get over it. And hopefully uh, I'll be back to work before you know it. 
because I miss doing something. It is driving me nuts. So I figured I'd do some videos for you guys. Y'all have a great, wonderful day. God bless, and all things are possible. Peace, matter, Gator, later. Later, later, Gator, and God bless. Have a great day.